Nicobe Dean, and I, I let me get Gary Cobb in here and get his thoughts here on Devin White. I mean, four of the last five years, or five of the last six years, Gary. Now, pro football focus isn't the end all, but maybe you get one year wrong. Gary, last five years, they've said that he's the worst tackling linebacker and cover linebacker, and that quarterbacks last year had 110 quarterback rating versus him in pass coverage. Mm. Well, I... <clears throat> I know, uh, you know, and I can't say I'm an expert on him, but I know that he has been, I mean, he's just been going south, you know, um, with regards to uh, the way he's been playing. Um, you know, I, I don't know what's going on with him, his whole, his whole attitude. Uh, you know, he is undersized. And a lot of times, you know, um, the teams want to beat up on him because, you know, he, he's fast, he's quick. but you know, he don't like stepping up, you know, taking on a 300 pound plus guard or whoever is coming at him. So that hasn't really been his strong suit and, and tackling, you know, um, he has been known to uh, miss a lot of tackles and, and, and just really, he's just gotten, you know, as he's played a reputation for really being undisciplined. Uh, and he says he's going to change that. I, you know, read some of the comments he's made, you know, that he's going to, this is going to be a, a, a change uh, in the direction he's going, and he needs to change. I hope so. I, I hope so. You know, I mean, yeah. you got to, hey, Gary, you're six years in. Yeah. There has to be an epiphany every now and then somewhere in this, right? It, 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 it better, or it's going to be a disaster because you know that's not going to work here in Philly. You know, if, if he's stinking up the joint, you know, the people are not going to bite their tongue. You know, he's going to hear it, and uh, he's got a problem with that. You know, he's going to have a problem playing here. There's no doubt about it. And uh, the, the linebacker position is going to be a focal point. Uh, teams are going to be looking at what they do. they got younger guys in front of them. You know, these young guys, they're learning the game. They're learning the pro game. So you figure if you had experienced linebackers, you know, they would kind of be leading the way. But we will see. It's going to be interesting to see what, what transpires. You know, um, they didn't really, uh, you know, show – you know, great belief that he's going to be great. They give him one year. You know, that, that means, hey, they're, they're not sure. How about this, Gary? They got $40 million still in cap space. Yeah. Now, here, here's here's how I it, – please, and correct me if you see it different. So they signed Gardner Johnson instead of Xavier McKinney, $17 million. They get C.J. cheaper. Instead of getting Patrick Queen at seventeen eight. They get um, Devin White at seven million, and it's cheaper. Mm -hmm. Instead of getting Brian Burns, twenty six million at end, you get a guy who struggles against the run and is not a complete three down player. in Bryce Huff, is it me? And you still have forty million. I mean, why are you still bargain shopping at positions that you need to get total quality players in, where you were never really in the room, Gary? For those mm -hmm. top flight first two day defensive type players, am I wrong when I'm saying this? I, I, I think you know uh, we could see what they've done. I mean, from what I could see with this this team that they're putting together is uh, they, they they're expecting the offense to carry them. You know, they're expecting their offense is going to carry them. I mean, I, you know, uh, and uh, you know, I, I I think with um with the way the design of the defense to take away the big plays. Uh, you know, play smart football. Of course, you want to get some turnovers. Uh, so if the team drives, you know, you don't want to give up big plays, but you think that you're going to turn the ball over some and you're going to have an offense that's going to be the best or one of the best in the league. That seems like the way they're thinking because, you know, you're going to be spending a lot of money on offense. I mean, uh, you know, Devontae Smith, you're going to have to, you know, he, He's, he wants his money, I'm sure. And Yeah, but Gary, you know he's going to get heat from the NFL PA and his agent not to sign a deal until Justin Jefferson, who just turned down a – get this, Gary, he just turned down a $30 million contract. Lamb hasn't even been offered. So if I'm, if I'm Devontae, aren't you doing this? I'm not signing anything until the market's set. I, I, I can see that. Uh, of course, they're going to try to get it moving, but – you know, I mean, the wisest thing for him would be to, you know, to go ahead and, as you said, wait till the market settles. But, um, 
You know, I don't know. How, I mean, you know, it, it's going to be interesting to see how much would they be willing to play to pay Devontae. You know, you've got uh, AJ already making twenty five. You know, they do they think uh, Devontae's better, or, but he's 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 signing it at, at a later date. So this is going to be interesting to see how this thing plays out. But I think, you know, the Eagles right now, I look at their team, they're a team that wants to come out every week and score over 30 points. You know, that's the way they've got the talent. And um, the defense is going to be looked at as a team uh, basically to just, you know, um, make make some plays, get some turnovers. Uh, but you're not looking at a dominant defense. How about this, Gary? Kenny Pickett season, baby. Here we go. Hey, now, 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 follow me here. Do I think Kenny Pickett's good? No. Do I think that Justin Fields is good? But I want to show you something here. Mm -hmm. Since 2000, AJ Freely, Andy Hall, Kevin Cobb, Mike Kafka, uh, Matt Barkley, Clayton Thornson, uh, Tanner McKee, and the only two quarterbacks, really, you had Foles with the moment. And you had Wentz and Hurts in the last 25 years. You made a poor decision on moving off of Foles and kept Wentz. Am I really under the belief that they this organization knows what and how to evaluate the quarterback position when that whole Wentz thing went sideways? Last year, do we not agree that they, they were part of the reason why Hurts took a step backwards because of the lack of coordinator? Why, do, why am I under the belief? that they know what they're doing when it comes to player development at that position? Well, you know, I, I think uh, I, I could see where you could, you could definitely, um, you know, question them. Uh, but I think also they look at the fact, you know, they've been to a couple of Super Bowls, you know, in the last, you know, what, five they've years. They've been to three so. in that time frame. And, and so that's where they would come back with, at you, you know, yeah, you know, maybe they didn't do the right things, uh, uh, where you know Carson Wentz went south on him, but they won a Super Bowl with Carson Wentz. I mean, yes, where they he, did. He 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 got them there, and then he talked with uh, you know Jalen Hurts. You know, regardless of what he does going forward, you know they were very close to winning the Super Bowl with Jalen Hurts. So uh, I think they would they got to feel pretty good about that, and I think that's the argument that they make is that um, you know maybe it wasn't you know, drawn out the way you would, which is you probably, you bring in this guy and he plays uh, for 10 to 12 years. He's your, he's your quarterback. You build everything around him. Well, instead of that, they've had two guys, but they've had two trips to the Super Bowl, and, and they feel like maybe they get a chance to do some more with, uh, with Jalen Hurts and he's still very young. So I, you know, I, you know, you know, they're confident about, about what they've been doing and they would have to admit they made some mistakes, no doubt. But they, in in the last five years, they have to say, you know what? We feel pretty good that we can match anybody uh, in the NFL the last five years. Let me ask you a question on Josh Sweat and then also on Reddick. Do you believe that Sweat and Reddick, obviously Sweat just restructured his contract, so he's back. Yeah. But do you believe that is a sign that Reddick's out the door? Or do you think that Reddick – will be brought back and they're going to pay two dudes. One 17 million and the other guy potentially 25 million. I, I mean, I would be surprised if they do that. Um, even though, you know, of course their thinking is, Hey, we pay the pass rushers. Uh, we pay pass rushers. We pay, we play to our corners. You know, everybody else is, is not as, uh, is not going to get, you know, the major dollars. That's been their thinking, but you know they changed their thinking at at, uh, at running back. You know maybe maybe they're changing a little bit. I I don't see how you can put that much money in, even though they may they can look inside and say you know well we're not paying we're not paying our tackles we don't have to pay them yet. We got we got youngsters in there at the tackle position and therefore we can have more outside. Maybe they think that way. Uh, maybe they they um. They hang in there and, um, you know, they, they go ahead and bring Hassan back. Uh, but, I, you know, I, I'm definitely surprised. But, you know, I, I didn't think they would bring a Saquon in there. So, I you know, I mean, do I know what they're doing? I, I don't know. 
and, and maybe they're just maybe they're getting a little bit more aggressive because the salary cap went up and everything. And may, maybe they're being more aggressive, but I, I could imagine maybe they, it, they could do that for a year. But of course, Hassan won't be happy. He wants 25, you know. Um, I, I don't think we can predict what they can do because we wouldn't have said Saquon would be here. We, they wouldn't have given Saquon that much. So I don't I don't know if they know what they're doing. I'm, I'm, I'm surprised. I think they're changing things. How about this, Gary, when it comes to Jalen? You yeah. know, somebody brought it up to me earlier and I said, well, He's basically doing the same thing in Philadelphia with Brock Purdy's doing in um, San Francisco. And I say, with all due respect, it's just different. Brock yeah. Purdy has a ton of talent around him. Jalen Hurts has a ton of talent around him. I mean, when does it become a point where the organization does this? There's very little we can do. You've got six pro bowlers in your huddle. Yeah. I mean, Gary, how, how important is this year for them looking at Jalen in this – I think they still look at him right now, Gary, in the same light that they did in 22. But doesn't it get to a point, if this thing doesn't move the needle forward with all these moves, that you're going to have to really have a sit down and go, okay, this is where we are. So it, here we are back to 2022 again with Jalen that, you know, we're, we're, we're in a wait and see how this thing plays out. Now everyone's hoping it plays out right. But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, we're not sure. I think that that you know when you make moves like this, you know, the go get Saquon Barkley. You you want to win the whole thing, I mean, and you then you see aggressive stuff defensively. They're going after it, you know, and I I you know I commend them for that, but there's no question that they're going after it, you know. I mean, they are saying we are trying to win this whole thing, and uh, you know, hopefully they do. But they are. I mean, I give them credit. I don't think anybody knew that they would be this aggressive, you know, and uh, clearly that's what, you know, their thinking is. And I, you can see they, they have, I don't know what else they could do offensively to be more aggressive. You know, I don't know what else they could do. They've shown that uh, they're, they're probably not done defensively. They're not done yet. And, and they've been aggressive over there as well. You think they'll be uh, maybe not, not maybe not that's as why well. He's hanging on not, to that forty much, million because they expect their offense to carry them. Gary, do you think one of the reasons they held on to that forty million because uh, they're under forty under the cap is because there's going to be cap casualties coming up? You know, I mean that's a, that's that's a great point. That's a great point. They definitely could go in and, and really could get some great players. I mean, because I'm sure they've done their homework. They know who's probably going to drop out there, so. I definitely think that that's probably the way Howie's thinking, and you know uh, they're going after it. So I, you know, I got to commend them for that. You know, we'll see whether they were right or not. But you know, uh, that offense, you know, if you could keep, if you keep Saquon healthy, man, I mean, and and you know, they got to be going after people. I mean, they got to be attacking these guys before they get off the bus. I mean, they they're going trying to put points on the board because you know you got all these guys and defensively. That's that's going to be tough to to put together a game plan against that offense, because if you know if you you're going to just uh, you're not going to have anybody in that box and you're going to let Saquon just run the ball and things, you know I mean he is capable of taking it to the house every time he touches it. Somebody misses a tackle, man, dude is gone. Gary, so, yeah, um, it, I know that it was reversed a little bit, but you have changed rivalries in a division when you go from one rival to another like Barkley is going from the Giants to the Eagles yeah um how did you prepare and change that mentality when was it just about being a pro was it just about or did you have angst in what you wanted to do versus a when you know versus the other team when you were on it mm -hmm. how, how did you how did you prepare yourself for going when you were a ri major rival of this respected team and you get traded to another team? Mm -hmm. How did you deal with that? Well, it's something that, you know, I, I have to say you are a pro. And um, because you're a pro, you know, and, and you have the commitment, you know, and, and you know that uh, anybody, the team you're playing with, you get close with the guys you're playing with because you, you live with each other, you know, all day long. You're, you're around these guys. So um, 
it was just kind of a natural transition for me. I mean, I'm, I'm with the guys that I'm with, you know, and, um, you know, not it's, you know, it's a friendship and everything, but it's a commitment. And as a player, you want to win. I don't care who the other guys are. We want to win. And so, you know, you could be playing against your brother. You want to, you want to win the game. And so if you catch him coming across the middle, you gotta go, well, that's my brother. You know, has no. to be mentally tough for you though. Uh, I think, yeah, it, it is. Uh, but a guy you but, got all but, this lather up for the year before, all of a sudden now you're playing with him. Yeah, but see, you know that, uh, you know, they don't do that as much now. But really, uh, when I was playing, you know, you you go against the guys on your team more than anybody different. else. It was and you have rivalries with them because he's talking noise to you. You you know, you're going to talk noise back to him. So. If you, you get a chance to bust them, you're going to bust them. I mean, you know, this is part of the game, and everybody respects that. And so um, it's really not that hard to get in there. The, the guys on the other side are the enemy. <laughs> it, it's really not that hard. And, um, you know, I, I think it's it's probably more so when you get off the field where you're talking and, you know, you're friends with different guys and stuff. But the guy on the field, even in practice, come on. De that guy on the field is trying to block me. I'm sorry. I, you know, I don't have no problem. Whatever I got to do, you know, <laughs> I can see I, you I doing this part Gary. of the game. Talking to your wife. Hey, did the direct deposit clear on Tuesday? Yeah. <laughs> okay. We're good. <laughs> hey, hey, what do you say? That, no, it's, it's, uh, it's pretty easy. And then, uh, well, you know, you see somebody like, um, Gardner Johnson, he's moving. There's a good chance the Eagles could be seeing the Lions down the road. And oh, yeah. But, you know, he's going to be talking more noise than anybody else. You know, and he just played with those guys. See, But, you know, when you, you become a rival, it's almost like because you know them, it's a bigger rival because you know those guys. And and you got to hear their mouth if they win. So you, you're you looking forward to that game more than anything else. So Barkley's 0-10 uh, you know versus the Cowboys. Wait, say that again? Barkley's 0-10 versus the Cowboys. Well, I think he's going to try to uh, take care of that. He's going to get a good chance to take care of uh, – <laughs> get that stuff going in a different direction this year because – and what's going on down there? Are they still down there? I don't know, Are the man. Cowboys still down there? What's man. going on with those guys? Dude, they, they just lost a linebacker to retirement. I mean, they just lost Tyron Smith to the Jets. He just I, signed with the Jets. I know. I thought maybe they they out on a cruise somewhere. The whole team is out on a boat somewhere on a cruise uh, with Jerry. Oh, I know Jeffrey them. Lurie's kidnapped the Joneses and's got them down there in Morocco on that new yacht. <laughs> I mean, we have not heard from those people. Hey, man, he sent them to the same place where the guy in France was. I, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess so. You're right. The guy in France. Yeah, that, that used to be the guy. But, yeah, now it's the, the guy with his boat. The guy in France. Gary, thank you so much, my friend. I appreciate it. All right. Hey, have a good one. It's going to be interesting. It is. It absolutely is. Gary Cobb, Fox 29, Philadelphia. Hit the like button. The guy in France. I actually like the guy in France. Keep it here, National Football Show.